Starting in late 2019, a cluster of citizens in New Brunswick started reporting symptoms of a neurological condition. At first, it looked like a number of instances of Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, a rare and severe brain disorder. But over the coming years, a group of 48 cases would be classified as a mysterious unknown brain illness that would prompt a thorough investigation, collaborating with scientists and doctors all over the country until the province abruptly formed their own private committee and shut everyone else out. A year later, the province issued their official report that the unknown brain illness had been misdiagnosed and there was nothing to worry about. That story, backed up by four separate reports, is hard to refute Yet many of those closest to the victims don't buy it. So what is really going on with New Brunswick's mysterious brain illness? Is it, as the province says, a series of other already known illnesses that have been misdiagnosed? Or is someone hiding something? The investigation into the mystery brain illness began when the creutzfeldt jakob disease surveillance system, a Canadian government health organization that monitors and researches creutzfeldt jakob disease, noticed an uptick of diagnoses in the province in early 2020. CJD is an extremely rare and aggressive neurological condition. These patients were suffering from muscle spasms, hallucinations, memory loss, personality changes, and in some, aggressive dementia, among other things. CJD usually affects patients over 60, although these reported patients ranged in age from 18 to 85. The majority of these patients were referred to Dr. Elir Marrero, a neurologist in Moncton, who tested them for CJD and found the test came back negative, so he reported them to the province as something he hadn't seen before. By April 2021, there were 48 reported cases of this new illness, and the province was taking it seriously. CJD affects about 0.0001% of people. This new illness was hitting patients at over 30 times that rate. More on that number later. New Brunswick formed a committee to investigate, bringing scientists and neurologists from across the country together to look into potential causes. The cohort was together for a few months until abruptly the province closed the investigation to professionals outside of the province, forming their own interdisciplinary team to continue the investigation and creating the MIND Clinic, or the Moncton Interdisciplinary Neurodegenerative Disease Clinic. Officially, the province has valid reasons for doing so. For example, one of the neurologists who was helping with research until he was cut off was Dr. Michael Kohlhart, the head of the CJDSS. He was cut off from the file once it was ruled out that the illness was CJD, so his expertise was no longer needed. The new provincial investigation looked at each patient's file, but did not meet with any of the patients, and over a few months came to some conclusions. First, they could find nothing linking the patients. No common behaviors, food, or environmental factors. They specifically investigated blue-green algae blooms, which can contain neurotoxins, and found they were not a factor. A committee of six neurologists found after reviewing the cases, none of them fulfilled the full criteria, and although some patients presented unusual symptoms, they did not represent a common unknown illness affecting the patients. The province closed the investigation in 2022 and put a page on their website explaining the chronology of the investigation and linking to reports from the various groups that investigated the illness. They don't say this explicitly, but the government page also suggests that the term mystery illness sounds a bit inflammatory. Public health organizations investigate potential health threats all the time. While they are being investigated and an answer isn't known, they are a mystery illness. But that doesn't suggest a conspiracy or widespread new disease. It just means there's a question to be answered. Once the province answered the question, it was no longer a mystery, and it was all blown out of proportion by the media. And so, it all was really just a misunderstanding that occupied a few media cycles, right? The story may not be so simple. There are a number of things that call into question whether the province is telling the whole story. Dr. Elir Marrero is the neurologist who reported nearly all of the 48 cases to the provincial government. Physicians have a duty to report unusual illnesses to the province, and he did so. Dr. Marrero was initially involved in the investigation. He was an early employee of the Mind Clinic and had the most direct experience with the patients. Dr. Marrero was initially tagged to lead a committee investigating the illness when the province started their own investigation in April 2021, but when the committee was formed, he wasn't on it. Still, the province said they would work closely with him until a few months later, they shut him out entirely. The province made one other major change in 2021 that may or may not have been because of Dr. Marrero. In October, they mandated that any unusual illnesses reported to the province needed to have a second opinion. More on that in a minute. 
Dr. Marrero was treating his patients at the Mind Clinic into 2022 when the clinic announced with no explanation that Dr. Marrero would no longer be working there. Patients could follow him to his private practice, but in doing so they would lose access to all of the other specialists they were seeing at the Mind Clinic. So why push Dr. Marrero out and try to separate him from his patients? I think there's two possible explanations. The first is a reasonable one. The province said that the reason Dr. Marrero was removed from the investigation was because he's biased, and they had good reason to think that. Although the cluster closed at 48 patients, Dr. Marrero kept reporting new instances of an unknown illness to the province long afterwards. In fact, Dr. Marrero says that he's personally treated over 200 cases of this unknown illness. New Brunswick's health organizations may have simply felt that Dr. Marrero was too invested in this illness being real and wanted the investigation completed by independent, unbiased professionals. This ties in with the requirement to have a second opinion when reporting new illnesses. This prevents one doctor's opinion from dominating what is presented. The other explanation is more nefarious. For some time, Dr. Marrero has been saying that his patient's blood tests show elevated levels of compounds found in herbicides like glyphosate, and that more testing needs to be done to determine if environmental factors are to blame, including blue-green algae. In response, Public Health New Brunswick told him if they are going to investigate, then he has to properly submit the paperwork for each patient. This is where the second opinion piece can feel calculated. Many of Dr. Marrero's patients are in aggressive neurological decline and don't have a lot of time. In addition, Canada's healthcare system is overwhelmed. Getting an appointment with one neurologist can take months, never mind getting a referral and waiting for a second, then waiting for MRIs, blood work, and other tests in order to get a second opinion. On top of that, each time a neurologist submits a report to Public Health New Brunswick, each report is about 50 pages and can take hours. If Dr. Marrero truly is seeing hundreds of patients with this illness, the amount of time for each of them to get a second opinion and have the paperwork completed and filed is staggering. So the government won't take his claims about glyphosate or other environmental factors seriously because he hasn't submitted the right paperwork, but submitting that paperwork is a monumental and nearly impossible task. If we're being cynical, the government has created a perfect setup where they can wash their hands of Dr. Marrero and say that it's his fault. Dr. Marrero isn't the only neurologist to think that something strange is going on. In 2024, The Guardian obtained emails sent in 2023 from Dr. Michael Colehart, the head of the CJDSS that I mentioned earlier, who raised his own concerns about New Brunswick's approach. Dr. Colehart was the federal lead on the investigation of the mystery illness until April 2021 when he was fully cut off. His emails state that he believes the reasons were political. His emails also support the idea that New Brunswick Public Health believes Dr. Marrero's bias and personal agenda is to blame for at least part of the situation. He writes, For reasons I can only discern to be political, I have been essentially cut off from any further involvement at the level of the public health issue. All I will say is that my scientific opinion is that there is something real going on in New Brunswick that absolutely cannot be explained by the bias or personal agenda of an individual neurologist. A few cases might be best explained by the latter, but there are just too many, now over 200. My strongest hypothesis is that there is some environmental exposure or perhaps a combination of exposures that is triggering and or accelerating a variety of neurodegenerative syndromes. He goes on to say that if that is the case, it can't be diagnosed as one single thing, creating a loophole through which the politicians can eagerly jump to say that nothing coherent is going on. In a way, Dr. Colehart is agreeing with the province's assessment. There is no mystery brain illness. What there very likely may be is an environmental factor or series of factors triggering or accelerating a series of unrelated brain illnesses in people who are already predisposed to them which is no less serious, but harder to articulate. If we continue to follow this potential rabbit hole, it begs the question, what is New Brunswick trying to avoid? If we believe Dr. Marrero and Dr. Colehart, their theory is that there is an environmental factor at play that is contributing to people getting sick, potentially linked to a herbicide like glyphosate. Glyphosate itself has been researched and debated for decades. It's the active ingredient in Roundup, and overall studies have shown that there is no conclusive evidence it's harmful to humans. One study has linked glyphosate to cancer, but there has been significant efforts to discredit it. Glyphosate does, however, cause algae blooms, which contain neurotoxins. The majority of the 48 reported cases of the illness are from Moncton and the Acadian Highlands, two areas that abut the coast. 
However, the government report did rule out algae blooms, but that doesn't paint the full picture. It's important to note that the government's investigation was looking for one common illness that explains how all of these people got sick, not a reason why people in New Brunswick might be getting sick in general. The government interviewed 38 of the original 48 patients and found that only eight of them, or 23.5%, had been exposed to an algae bloom. However, 25 of them had industrial exposures as part of their work or living conditions, 12 of them had reported exposures to pesticides and herbicides, and 80% of them reported spending time in or near the ocean. At different points between 2017 to 2020, all four of the reservoirs that provide Moncton's drinking water had levels of cyanobacteria, the bacteria caused by blue-green algae, that were higher than WHO recommendations. At least two of the species of cyanobacteria found in the reservoirs were capable of producing anatoxins and microcystins, two nerve-damaging toxins that can result in neurological conditions. Despite this, blue-green algae was ruled out as a cause. If I can put on my conspiracy theorist hat for a moment, New Brunswick is a province dominated by oil and logging, two industries that heavily pollute the environment around them. Logging in particular relies heavily on the use of glyphosate. A further investigation that revealed that glyphosate or a similar herbicide or industrial pollution was causing life-changing neurological conditions in the people of New Brunswick would be difficult for the province and the companies that have so much influence there. Dr. Eilish Cleary, a previous chief medical officer in New Brunswick, was fired from her job years ago. Many believe it was related to her investigating the effects of glyphosate. If you believe that to be true, then it isn't such a stretch to imagine something similar is happening here. The Irving family, an incredibly powerful New Brunswick family that owns a big chunk of the province's logging operations, is known to be able to impact the government. There are many powerful people in the province who would benefit from this mystery illness simply going away without too many questions. Regardless of the full truth, what New Brunswick Public Health has done here is really quite masterful. Nothing in their report is a lie. There is no mysterious brain illness that is affecting all of those people. Each of them is sick with something else. What is still in question is if they lied by omission, by not acknowledging that too many people are getting sick. Remember how I said earlier that people in New Brunswick were getting sick at 30 times the rate of Creutzfeldt Jacob disease? That was considering 48 total cases. If we consider at least 200 cases, as Dr. Marrero and Colehart have said, it's well over 200 times the rate of CJD. Something is going on in New Brunswick. What it is, we don't know. And while the government has given themselves a loophole to say that nothing is going on and to wash their hands of it, that does not stop the suffering of the patients who are sick, who don't have any answers, and who feel abandoned by the organizations that are supposed to help them.